Hello and welcome to Miniature Realms. My name is Stuart and welcome to a short review video. Now this will be a relatively short review video. Um, I've just received um, some extra uh, review stock from from Royal Games very very kindly sent me these French sprues. Now if you're uh, coming across this video and you haven't seen anything else on the channel I've got quite a few videos up relating to Royal Games' Epic Battles Waterloo release um, and I was very kindly sent um, lots of British um, so British infantry and British light cavalry. Um, there's obviously heavy cavalry being made available as free via War Games Illustrated magazine as well. So I, I've done some detailed sprue reviews of the British already prior to release of this game, which is, looks like it's coming out at the end of January 2022. At the time I'm recording this, we're at the 9th of January, I think. Um, so I've um, very, very kindly um, been given these. Now, um, many of you will have already seen reviews of these on Ken's Miniature Wargaming Warriors channel. He, when I got the British, he got given French, and we kind of uh, did, did similar things, but on our, on our respective channels. Um, Ken's a great guy and did some fantastic reviews of these, and has done some painting tutorials already. So I would definitely recommend checking his channel out if you haven't already. But just for completeness, I've been sent these, and I, I wanted to do a short review video myself. Um, and just really my first reaction to them, looking at them and having a look at the miniature. Obviously, I've seen the pictures online that everyone else has. I've seen the Ken's reviews, um, but I haven't had them in hand myself, um, at least not for a very long time. I saw a, a briefly quick look at them at um, Salute, but it's very hard to kind of really, really take it in until you get your hands on them properly and, and, and have, a, have a closer look. So here goes. So what have we got here with the French? So you get a mixture of um, troop types on the sprue as you do for the British. So every sprue has one piece of artillery. This is a six pounder. It has a mounted officer. With the British, you've got rifles in line, but in the French, you actually have Volta Gers and there's eight of them. You get three of these frames in a box, so that would give you three stands of Volta Gers if, you, if you're doing eight to a stand, which I think is the, the recommended amount. And then you would, um, you'd, you'd have 24 individual models. Um, and then you have essentially five, sorry, four stands worth of French infantry per regiment, so three full regiments per box as well. So this frame itself will, will give you one regiment of French. And the French themselves have a mix of designs. You've got two designs. You've got sort of standard field dress and you have great coats as well, which is interesting. You don't get great coats with the, with the British troops, um, but um, it's a really nice variation to have with the French. So one of my first impressions, um, very, very similar to the British really, in that I'm, I'm a fan of the sculpts, I'm a fan of what World Games are trying to do with this. It's not everyone's cup of tea, I know. Um, the, I would say overwhelmingly the, the reaction to this release is a good one. There are some people who, who are, you know, you know, quite rightfully in their own way, really like 100% accuracy um, and they really like to play their games in a certain way and that's absolutely fine and this release probably isn't aimed at them, if I'm honest with you. But I really like the the strips for me. It gives you the elegance of, um, of almost that sort of 6 mil um, strip but in a larger scale size which gives you the opportunity to have more detail and more realistic proportions on the, mon on the miniatures. Um, and that really attracts me as, as a painter primarily I really like the way these miniatures look um, I like the way they look when on the spirit like this but I really like the way they, they paint up as well for me there's a nice balance between um, the quality of the sculpt that almost makes you feel like a 28 mil model in terms of its proportion and the, and, the, and the quality of the digital sculpt and also the ability to get the large armies quickly and cheaply onto the table so that, that's what, like, what I like so much. I've liked that since the Americans for War release um, and why I was so happy that they, they you know, that the Waterloo or the Napoleonic release came out. So for me, that's why I, I really like them. There will be things people don't like as much, but uh, for me, um, if they do exactly what I need them to. Um, and uh, they look, you know, I, I'm not an expert on the French. Um, I'm not an expert in any country, really, but I'm definitely not an expert in the French in the same way as I, I know the British Army. Um, but the miniatures look pretty accurate to me for this scale, or at least accurate enough. You've got a nice um, range of different um, headdress finishes, so you'll be able to paint your, your different um, colours for your different companies. You have larger plumes to represent... 
um, flank companies, I believe, as well, even though you have separate Volta Gers individually. Um, and I'm a big fan of the, the having the great coats on there. I think it's um, <laughs> we start. It's, they, they'll be a lot quicker to paint, um, and it adds a real nice variety. And I'm not quite sure what to do with them really, whether to to have whole great coat regiments and whole standard battle dress regiments, or to mix them up. I suspect I'll probably do both things, and I'll have the old regiment that's entirely great coats, and the old regiment that's a bit of a mix as well. Um, so you have your regal on your command stand, um, one on each regiment. I believe it's only the first regiment, the first battalion in each regiment that has the eagle. After that, they don't. But again, they would be easy enough to trim off if you were representing others. Um, but it looks very, very cool. Um, as usual, they're all very, very much shoulder to shoulder. I've had quite a few messages and comments from people who are asking whether you can um, cut them up into smaller. Um, I think it's harder to do with these than it would be with, with some of the American Civil War. Um, some easier than the others. I mean, this, this, this strip here, you're looking at just sort of two elbows touching, and you could probably cut it in half and re-sculpt those. But most of them, they're overlapping a great deal. And I think you would be, you know, spend, having to spend an awful lot of time reconstructing the damage you've made when you cut. And if you look at things like the officer here, his arm is completely up, touching the side of the head there. It'd be very, very hard to cut him out if you were going to do it. So personally, I won't be doing that, but I know some people like to cut them down into smaller bases. So little little strips of five. And they know if you, you've got the time and the patience to do that, by, by all means, go for it. Um, now the the Voltigos really interest me because there weren't any skirmishes on the the British sprue. They've gone a different route for those. You can get rifle skirmishing riflemen will be available with the upcoming um, um, Highland and regiment Highland regiments when it comes out. So I really wanted to see these. Um, I've got the this metal skirmishes that came with the American Civil War. So these remind me of those in the sense that. Like, you know, in terms of scale and pose, the American Civil War ones, that a lot of them are like fight shooting over rocks or tree stumps and things. I'm glad that these aren't like that. I quite like to be able to add that to my bases myself if I want to. Um, I think it makes make, makes more sense maybe with the skirmishes in, in American Civil War, but um, I really like these sculpts. And I may start with painting the Voltigers first. It might be a fun little exercise. Um, a way of testing out some things, but uh, and overall, really, really fantastic. The the artillery is very similar to the British in the sense of the way it's sculpted. Um, one one difference would be, I think, it'd be much easier to achieve some variety here because you've only got one miniature attached to the wheel on each of these. So it'd be very easy to split the base and to move these guys into different places on the base. I have many bases on my desk. Um, the idea is that uh, they fit together essentially in the same way each time. Um, but by trimming that base, you'd very, very easily be able to reposition them much more than you could with, with the British. So that's that's really, really cool. Um, and again, for the mountain officer, I'm not sure what to say, really. Um, he looks pretty good. The detail's pretty good on his face. Um, I enjoy these miniatures. I enjoy painting them. So, and I'm looking forward to having a go with that one. So this is the French light cavalry sprue. So I've already done a review of the French heavy cavalry sprue. I'll uh, pop a little link in the, uh, the the video at the end for the other sprue reviews that I have done. But um, you get artillery again. So this is horse artillery this time um, with a six pounder gun. No officer on the the um, cavalry brigade sprues, and um, then you get a mix of cavalry types. So for the the light cavalry sprue, you get lancers, hussars, and chasseurs de cheval. Now you'd get three of these sprues in a box, and those three sprues would give you in total twenty one lancers, eighteen hussars, and twenty one chasseurs de cheval, and obviously three um, six pounder horse artillery crews. So I'd like to have a closer look at the, the miniatures. So let's have a closer look. It's quite easy at a quick glance without painting them to get some of them mixed up here. So you've got your, your chasseurs and your, your hussars, um, especially for someone who, again, as I said, isn't a, an expert on French. Um, the hussars you can see here with the, the jacket over the shoulder. 
um, and the chasseurs. Uh, these guys here, I think. Um, it's just similar headdresses on there, but they look very nice models actually. Like with the the British, I think I prefer the quality of the sculpts of the light cavalry than I do with the, the heavy. There just seems to be a little bit more detail on the chest area. Seems to be a little bit softer on on both the French and and the British heavy cavalry sprues. Hopefully this is focusing enough to give you guys a, a, a bit of an idea, but you know, there's high res images on, of them online, so that's probably not why you're watching this video. Um, the Lancers are obviously incredibly easy to, to pick out. Um, and again, they look very cool. I'm uh, happy to see them uh, with their Lancers down. I think that looks good for the charge. Um, quite impressive. Now something, something that's different from the British cavalry sprues is you, you do get eagles, you get bugles as well um, should you want to add them but you get eagles the um, the British cavalry didn't really carry standards into battle as far as I'm aware so they had kind of blank areas on the sprues but the French they do give you two eagles with each sprue um, and you can add them should you wish uh, it's a bit of a conversion um, but it means cutting off uh, a, a weapon um, and sticking on, you see a little bit of hand on there. Um, not too hard to do with plastic glue. Um, I don't know whether I'll add them or not anyway. Um, I don't know how common it was for the, the cavalry to take eagles into battle. I, I, I get the impression or heard somewhere that they didn't really, but they, they may have at some point, so the option is there with the British, it was just something that never really happened. Again, love to hear your thoughts on that in the comments below. Should I be adding, adding the Eagles on, um, or should I be saving them for something else? Um, but overall, I'm really happy with these, the same way as I am with, with the British Sprues, really. I am a fan of this release. Um, I'm not being paid to say that, I just genuinely am. Um, I like to be enthusiastic about things, so if this is not for you, that's cool. That really is cool. It doesn't bother me at all. There's some absolutely fantastic um, miniatures out there in a similar scales, around the 15 to 18 and 12 millimeter ranges. Um, and if Warlord's release isn't for you, that's cool. Don't need to give me a dislike because you don't like the video kind of thing. But um, I, I think these are a, a fantastic way of getting some some get napoleonic gaming on your table and a mass way for really pretty good prices to be honest with you um so anyway thanks very much for watching the video hopefully it was useful even though many of you by now would have seen these by other reviewers thank you again to world games for sending them to me and i look forward to bringing some painting tutorials for the french as well so please think about giving the video a like give us a subscribe and i'll catch you all soon